yesterday, or rather two days ago, um, we kind of explored using the chain rule with exponential functions, right? I did set in the homework some products and some questions, but we didn't have time to really work through it together. So I'm going to give you a bit of a guide to that. And there are a couple of things that are worth pointing out as we go. You can see these four questions here are the very brief examples that we're going to all work to, through simultaneously. And if you want, if you're going a bit faster than I am, I'm quite happy for you to go further along. Just watch out, there are some curveballs that have snuck in that I will explain as I go, but if you get to them before I do, uh, I won't have told you. So just be watchful for them, okay? So the first one, you can see there, it says e to the x minus 1 all cubed. So what we're going to do is uh, differentiate this. So I'm going to put a d on dx out the front, and what that indicates is whatever you're about to see, we're going to differentiate it. We're going to find its derivative. Okay? Now I'm using this as an example, it's relatively simple, to point out that in t uh, I keep on getting confused about days. In Wednesday's lesson, I showed you this very formal, long way of writing <clears throat> using the chain rule with this. Some of you might remember. Uh, I will sneak it down here. This was the really long way of writing it. Whenever we wanted to find dy on dx, we had to introduce u as our substitution. We said this would let us find dy on du. And then there was this other derivative, du on dx. And then the things would cancel and we would get the, the derivative we wanted, right? Uh, and that's why this is called chain rule. There's a chain of derivatives that kind of cancel out nicely. Okay. Now this is the kind of proper way to do it. But as you've probably noticed, it's a bit long. <laughs> like it's just a lot of stuff to write. So when you are comfortable, you can do the same rule without using all of the notation. So let me show you how it's going to work. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to, in my mind, think, what's u? What would be the appropriate u in here? If I were to say, like, go through and do that long working, I would, my first line of working might be let u equal, and I'm going to choose something in here. Any suggestions? Hmm. Now remember, oh yeah, Michael, do you want to give another? Sometimes, uh, for, so I think it's for you, you do the entire uh, thing, and then for you, you just do e to the x minus 1 in brackets. Okay, so this e to the x minus 1 in brackets that you just mentioned, right? This is a function all by itself. And then we're doing something else to that. We're cubing it. So remember, it's what we call the function of a function. Okay? So this would be my u. However, we don't need to say that it is, because all we're going to do is differentiate that thing with respect to x, which I actually think you guys already know how to do. What is the derivative of this inside bit? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So I can just leave it. I'm done. There is my du on dx. Right? And then what I multiply by is the dy on du. That's the outside part. So I would think of that as u cubed. When something is cubed, you differentiate it by saying, you've actually done it earlier today, right? You bring the power at the front and you reduce it by 1, right? 3u squared. Except in this case, that's my u. So I'm going to write this. 3. Listen for it, u, it's just a very, very long u, and then squared. I'm done. I mean, yeah, you could write the 3 out the front if you really wanted, okay? But this is fine. The whole thing is finished. So you can see it's a lot more concise than writing all of this stuff out. This is like four or five lines. The catch is, if it's not on the paper, you've got to retain it in your head. And for me, it's a little bit like when I'm packing a suitcase and I'm going traveling. Has anyone here ever gone, packed their suitcase, <laughs> pre-pandemic, and then they've forgotten some object that they obviously know you use all the time, like your towel or your toothbrush? Like, you know to bring your toothbrush. Why did you forget? Answer, you had a lot of stuff in your head and you just, like, that thing just dropped off the bottom, okay? If this is something which is too much to keep in your head, do this. But otherwise, if you're quite comfortable, like that was a ton faster, right? It's like twice as fast just to write it. Okay, so if you're comfortable, just go there. Let's have a look at question two. Similar deal. I wonder if we can manage it. We're going to differentiate. What did I give you? E to the power of what? 7x squared plus x. Sorry, I just can't. The angle's a bit funny, so I can't read it. Let's see if we can do this again without writing our long notation, right? Again, I'm looking for a u. What might be the u in this case? 
Yeah, fantastic, Josh. It's that 7x squared plus x is all that stuff in the index. Again, it's a function of a function. So you're just trying to identify the whole piece. And I'm going to do just like I did before. I'll have to differentiate this bit and then differentiate the whole thing. Can we differentiate 7x squared plus x? I think we can, right? What's the first term going to be? 14x. I've done this before. The x is going to become plus 1. So there's the du on dx. And now I've got e to the power of u. It's just this is my new u. What happens when you differentiate e to the power of something? It stays the same. No change. Okay, so therefore, this thing is just going to be that. No change. So I'll write it again. e to the power of 7x squared plus x. And that's it. Like, wow, mom, a whole single line of working, that's it, okay? So if you're comfortable doing this, you get a massive time advantage if you can retain it in your head. If it's too much, do this until you feel comfortable, okay? All right, I'm actually gonna skip over three for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go straight to four. If you have a go at three and it's like puzzling you, I'm happy to, I'll do it on the board if you like, but I wanna highlight a particular lesson in question four. Um, what was your name again? You mentioned you did this. What, did you, what was your name again? Abbas. Abbas. Abbas did this, right? And this is actually, I said I was going to come back to this. What Abbas did was he reframed a question that used the quotient rule so he didn't have to use the quotient rule. Yeah? Now I want you to have a look at question four. As I write it on the board in a second, I want you to think about how we can pull a similar kind of trick to what Abbas did, right? It looks like a quotient. You can differentiate this with the quotient rule but I can reframe it so that I don't need to. And unlike here, where I think we concluded pretty much the same amount of work, this one's gonna be a huge time saving. So give me a moment to write it down and I wonder if anyone can tell me what might be a way, oh, is it plus one? It is. That we can rewrite this so I can avoid the quotient rule. Any suggestions? All right, what do you reckon? Okay, very good. So this is all one big fraction at the moment, right? But I actually can just slice it right down the middle. Do this with me right now. You can see it's got a common denominator, e to the x. So in fact, I can just say, hey, let's view this, these two bits on the numerator, let's view them as two separate fractions with the same denominator. So in fact, I'm just going to write that twice. e to the x, and then e to the x, okay? Now, to me, in the first instance, it's like, that looks like it's worse, not better, but it is better because, say this first fraction, I can simplify that. It doesn't have to be a fraction at all. Think about your index laws. e to the 3x divided by e to the x, e to the 2x. We are subtracting indices when we're dividing, okay? This one here, 1 divided by e to the x, this is going to be a negative index, isn't it? So I would write that as e to the negative x. No quotients. I don't need to use the quotient rule at all. But I do need to differentiate now. All I did was reframe the question. So if the derivative of all of this is going to be the same as the derivative of all of this, and I'm going to go term by term now, okay? This one here, it's just like the question we did, question two, right? Here's my u. 2x. What's its derivative? Just 2x. It's going to be just 2. And then I've got e to the power of something. e to the power of something just becomes the same thing. It doesn't change. Like so. And I'm just going to keep going. Here's my new u. It's negative x. When I differentiate that, I get negative 1. So I'm going to go minus. And then I do the rest of it. e to the power of something differentiate it, nothing happens. That's it. Um, in much the same way like we did earlier, if you wanted to, because they gave it to us one fraction, you could put it back on common denominators and get one fraction, but I'm actually quite okay with that.